Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and today we're going to talk about imaging the alar ligament. So, as you can see here in the middle pane, I've got the alar ligament. Uh, so, uh, this is the dens here in the middle, and the alar ligament comes out like wings, which is what alar means in Latin. And it connects the dens to the occiput here. So, basically connecting C2 to the skull. And uh, it's, this is an upright MRI, so fairly amazing that they caught the alar ligament because this is a low field open. And if we scroll uh, back and forth here, we can see that we've got some of the alar ligament here on either side. We're also now starting to pick up some of the transverse ligament uh, as well. Uh, but this is the alar ligament. Now, if we wanted to get a really great shot of the alar ligament, uh, we would want to get a 1.5 or 3 Tesla MRI with very thin 1 to 2 millimeter slices in the same coronal plane that you see here. Now, uh, it looks like the alar ligament here has some decrease in signal, meaning it's a, a brighter color rather than a darker color. And that may mean that the alar ligament has problems, but realize if we wanted to check that, we would have to stress the alar ligament. And you can either stress it with a digital motion x-ray on an AP open mouth lateral bending looking for C1-C2 overhang, or you could also stress it on a rotational CT, but in my experience, rotational CT is less sensitive for uh, dynamic laxity in the alar ligament. So nice shot of the alar ligament, which is what I wanted to share. And there are ways to get a better shot of the alar ligament. And if we see changes in signal, we then have to test the alar ligament to see if it's allowing too much motion to see if the patient has craniocervical instability. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.